welcome back to the armory this is the replay analysis portion of week three with glitched how are you doing glitched pretty good 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 so we're going to jump into a replay over here um this is a tvp on oh gosh i can never remember the name of this map not star <laughs> station no um mm, this one's gonna hurt mm. This is embarrassing. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, I'm not even going to tell you. Oh, do you know? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so talk uh, talk quickly about your Terran vs. Protoss openings, just to give give everybody an idea. And I know we I think we've seen them before, but just go ahead and mention them. How do you open Terran vs. Protoss? Um, Terran vs. Protoss is usually a one barracks class expand. Um, into a two barracks down, <coughs> uh, into two barracks, into, yeah, just that's pretty much it. Okay, yeah, yeah. And you usually grab that first Reaper, right? Is that yep. correct? Just to do a little scouting. And then you drop a reactor. Yep. And you, then your expansion at some point during that time. Um, so you're, this, this probe is being really annoying, blah, blah, blah. Very. You do have two guys chasing it, so I think we talked about that one episode. Just have one guy, because you, and your marine is about to pop out, and phew. so we are seeing a billion SCVs off the line. So that's mm. hurting your economy quite significantly. Um, if we just take a look at the spending tab, um, you've just spent about three. You have about three hundred, four hundred minerals less than him at this point. Um, as far as minerals mined. Mm. So that that's pretty significant if you think about it by now. Um, you're sending out that Reaper and you're building that bunker, so that's really good solid play. That bunker is so nice. And uh, Reaper Special. is scouting. So what are you looking for with this Reaper? Um, at this point, to be honest, I don't really know. Okay. Um, I'm just... Scouting, getting in, keeping it alive. Um, currently, I'm looking for big things, so like four gates and um, stuff that really stick out. I don't really know how too many openings work yet okay. for Protoss. And that's completely fair. So when you see this four gate, what do you think? What what kind of goes through your head here? Um. Well, I've got a, a four gate push coming. Um, oh, yeah. and I believe it's an eight-minute timing, right? Six minutes. Oh, it's, a, it's a six minute. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's when warp gate finishes, at least. Um, approx like it can be slightly like you can get it as fast as five fifty finish, and he actually got it at the five fifty timing. Yeah. So, um, that's when his uh, first warping comes in. Um. So so what do you what do you do? I guess. Do you just die? Do you just decide <laughs> at this point that you're dead? No, um, I failed here actually. Um, I didn't notice the pylons in the bottom corners, yeah. and I thought I had time. Um, if I had noticed the pylons in the bottom corners of my natural, I would have canceled my natural, um, put up bunkers, or just put up more barracks, and started producing more units. Um, sadly, I didn't, and you will see what happens. <laughs> yeah, and I'll tell it you either bit. way. Either way, you lose to this push. Yeah. If you cancel in the CC, just think mm -hmm. of your, your barrack time. You got uh, 65 seconds, so that's another minute. And you yeah. have you have one Marine. So you're going to have three Marines about the time that he warps in four gateways. So at this point, gotcha. this is like a rock, paper, scissors. You picked paper, he picked rock, you lost. Gotcha. So that's that's what we see as a problem with our opening that's that's what we would call a really um i guess you just say gimmicky it's perfectly fine to play rock paper scissors in a tournament setting but as as us as we're just trying to improve this is an opening that definitely fails us mm. so let's just watch the destruction because i'm sure people are like no way you can hold this or something i don't know maybe they're probably not saying that <laughs> Because, so, yeah, just to reiterate at that point, if you had canceled that stuff on the ground and dropped a bunker on top, you'd have your bunker finishing um, in, like, 
five seconds or something, but he would yeah. still just walk up and kill you. So it, it's just a, it's one of those checkmate moments. So now we're going to talk about how do we fix that? Because you're doing this really good thing about scouting with the Reaper, but that doesn't help if you can't, or if you can't from that point, the point that you scout, if you can't change your build in a way that lets you survive, mm. um, and in a lot of ways, not necessarily just survive, but end up in an equal situation, then your build is weak. Yeah. So let's quickly run through the build that you are doing currently in TVP. And we'll use TVP as an example, just because this is what we have this week. And this is a big flaw I saw. But I really want you to incorporate in the, incorporate this into how you're thinking about that Terran versus Zerg. Because what I mentioned before is if, yes, you build a lot of Hellions, well, what if that Zerg player just builds Roaches and comes wins, right? We need to mm-hmm. incorporate all of those things in our play so that we have responses to the wide variety that your opponent can be doing. Yeah. So just run us through that that opening really quick again. You. Okay, give me one second. I'll just pull it up quick. Okay. And this definitely works for all matchups. So when we talk about Terran versus Terran, if you are to do something like um, a Banshee opening and you lose to a push, no matter what, then you need to think, okay, how do I make this more stable? So anyways, do you got that build opened? Yep. <clears throat> okay, so 12 racks and gas at the same time. Um and at 18, it's reactor on racks, mm-hmm. along with the CC. <clears throat> and usually, I try to get my orbital fit in at about 17, 18. Um, that 19 is a bunker. And then into engineering bay, and then two racks, and from there. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna write that down really quickly for everybody. Uh... I'm just ugh. okay. So you said racks at whatever regular time, right? At Twelve, and then you get your gas. And is you said your gas was fifteen? Twelve racks and gas. Both at the same time. Oh, okay. Um, build the reaper on fifty, and then once the reaper's off, and you hit fifty more gas, you. Do the uh, yeah. the off gas pull, right? And do you and pull you your build... guys off gas? Yeah. Ooh, that's good. Um, or I try to when I remember to. <laughs> um, but yeah, then it's the reactor, CC, and orbital, and then the bunker. Right, right on, right on. Um, orbital bunker. Okay, so we see that you've done that bunker, right? And the, the, I guess the theory would be if he's below your ramp, if you don't have that supply depot, or at least your idea is if you have that bunker, you can survive. Yeah. Problem being, any committed foregate will break that bunker. Yeah. It's designed to break bunkers, um, especially if they include sentries, which this guy did. Um, so what we need is a better answer. We need more stuff because what you're doing – if we think of the game as spending down three lines, you can either spend into economy, into army, or into technology. We, mm-hmm. we see you early game spend in technology by putting stuff in gas, getting out a reaper, and getting out a reactor. A reactor is a technology that lets you produce two units, which is the equivalent of spending um, two barracks. It mm-hmm. does the same as two barracks. And a reaper isn't... It's more of a scouting harassment, less than an army. So it it it's more of gives you information, doesn't actually help your army um, composition. So what you're doing is you're spending dirt down two lines. You're spending down the economy line by getting a quick uh, command center on orbital, and then you're spending down the line of technology by getting all this gas heavy stuff. What is the biggest problem with spending down those two lines? There's no military backup. 
Yeah, you have no mili Oh man. Skype, why are you doing this? Sorry. Problem. Skype just I don't know. It's this is uh, why those editing programs. <laughs> oh, that's so weird. Okay. I'm just gonna cut this whole part out until we get you back. There, you're back. Okay. So I'm gonna rethink what I was thinking. Okay. So what's the biggest? I'm just gonna give me a second. Okay. Hmm. Now you can cut this part. Cut this part. Cut this part. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, technology saves us all, so we don't look so stupid. Still look slightly stupid. So what do you think the biggest problem is if you're only spending on technology and economy? I don't have the military backup for proper defense, especially against a foregate. Right. So if your opponent spends on any army, you're going to be in a really sketchy position where you don't have the capability to defend yourself. If mm -hmm. your opponent spends nothing on army, then you'll be in the same place as your opponent and you'll end up playing a longer game. But if your opponent spends anything on army, you're in a really sticky situation. So one of the general rules mm -hmm. when thinking about game plans is the most important part of early game is spending on army and economy because economy allows you to keep up with your opponents if they are spending on purely economy and mm. army allows you to survive, right? Yep. Because the early game is so so balanced on a knife edge because if things like this happen, your opponent spend all on army. You spent on economy and technology. Game over. You spent yep. on economy and not enough on army and spent some on technology. Game over, right? It's this yep. really balanced balancing knife where you have to spend the minimum amount on economy and spend the rest on army to survive against someone that only spends on army, right? So when you think about yeah. your early game, I really encourage you to be thinking, how do I make a lot of stuff to survive? Because the most important part is to survive. Mm. So how would you change what you're doing so that you have this more what I would call flexible early game is um is that one racks uh one reaper fast expand is that too expensive for early game is that what you're getting at I'm not saying that but what I am saying is the if okay here's the question you need to answer if the reaper sees the foregate as you did mm -hmm. is it possible for you to defend with spending the amount on that reaper so if we jump back in the game we'll just take a look at all the different things you spent money on and we'll answer this question okay. so jumping back to the game so at what point do you scout this so you're sending the reaper out uh, at about five minutes so you could be scouting right at five minutes i'm gonna just, oh, pause the game I'm going to jump back 30 seconds here. Okay, boom. What do we see? Four gates. Fourth one's just warping in. What do we have? We have one marine. We have the command center going up, which is good. We have a refinery, and we have this reactor finishing. We have 200 minerals and 250 gas. Mm. So something that you said earlier is really important here. Pulling guys off gas. That's the first step. If that 250 minerals was 200 or 250 gas, pardon me, was 250 minerals, is that look like a lot better situation? If you have 450 minerals right at this moment? Yeah. So if you think about that, so pretend you do everything the same, you pull those guys off gas, you still make this reactor, and, um, you you have three more barracks. What's that? That's 450 minerals, yeah. So you have three more barracks that you start 
right about at this point, at about 5 minutes and 30, 520. And you could probably even start a second barracks earlier. Mm -hmm. And then if you see something like this, you can add your two more barracks. Or if you don't see something like that, you can add gas. So that's And you can put your guys back on gas. So that's something that you can be thinking about as you sort of develop this game plan. But so say at this, so at 5.30, you build them, so they take a minute. So we jumped to, did I say 5.30? So at yeah. 6.30 is right when he's attacking. You would have, um, you'd have four barracks finished. You'd have probably, um, you'd have two Marines. You'd have maybe one or two more Marines from barracks that finished earlier. So you'd still only have four Marines defending this at about 630. So is, is that a comfortable position to be in? I guess two sentries and two stalkers, not really. It's not the worst if he doesn't get up your ramp, but it pretty much still is a losing situation. Mm -hmm. So what other things can we shave off this build um, while still doing the Reaper. Assuming you really like the Reaper, which I think you do, and I really like the Reaper, how do we make this viable? So think about it. Um, what's When do you make this Reaper? Right there. So at four, 430, what do you have? So you still have a lot of... Oh, man, look at this. Look at how much minerals... Oh, you haven't built your command center yet, so forgive yeah. me. Um, if you didn't have any gas, we'll just pretend that that is all minerals. It's not an exact exchange, but we'll just pretend. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, three, f you'd have 400 minerals. So you'd be able to build your command center right now at the same time as you build this bunker. Um, so you're getting an earlier command center just by taking those guys off gas, which is what you assume. Yeah. Um, and then you're making this reactor. Um so, have I ex explained what reactors do mm -hmm. as far as marine production? Yeah. Okay. So, if you were to take these three guys off gas as soon as you make the Reaper and not even go up to 100 gas, that would give you... You could do the same thing as this reactor but have more Marines. So that's going to be a good thing, right? Okay. So let's skip this re or skipping this reactor allows you to get more units. If you drop a barracks. So how do we do that without screwing up our command center timing? This bunker is definitely early. If we think about the timing, um, that that hits and that's pretty much like Protoss have a earlier three gate timing. But we'll just mm -hmm. assume you want this bunker to finish just before six minutes. A bunker build time being 40 seconds. So you need to start it at 520. So I'm saying here this 100 minerals can be used for a barracks. Almost. So if we jump forward in time a bit. Right there. So you'd have enough to build the command center and another barracks. So that's nice because your barracks is finishing... Or starting at five minutes. Um, so it's going to be done by six minutes. Um, plus these 50 re reactor. I forgot about this reactor because you're not building this reactor. So that, so that reactor and this bunker is the equivalent of another barracks. So you're having like three barracks and a command center started before five minutes. So that's a lot better situation. Mm. And all this time you're not mining gas. So that's probably one of the most important things about this is this gas is really hampering the amount of units you have. Gotcha. I love this. I love the re the Reaper, and I think everyone does. But if we want to make this stable, we need a lot more barracks early. Okay. But don't do get this command center. I love how you're getting this really early command center right after the Reaper because the Reaper makes it so you know what to do after that command center because a lot of people just build a barracks and build a command center and then be okay. in this situ oh. in this situation where they have no ability to know what your opponent's doing 
And that's a very scary place to be in. So whenever I recommend, you need to be active on the map. And this Reaper allows you to do that, and it's so good. So we don't want to neglect this Reaper. We don't want to skip this Reaper. We're going to keep the Reaper, and instead of getting all this gas, instead of doing all these other things, we're just going to build a crap load of Marines, right? Okay. Because that's stable. That's good. That's good. That's good. You're going to have a lot more Marines. You're going to be way safer. And what's another amazing thing about having a large army? Aside from being safe. You can aggress if you want to. Big time. Boom. So what happens, what happens when you spend a lot on army is you're giving yourself opportunity to do damage, to win games, to take map control. Aggression is the heart of real time strategy. Mm -hmm. So anytime you can turn it on your on the game on its head, and instead of being defensive, instead of being passive, instead of just macroing, 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 instead of doing those things, if you can turn the game and say, I'm going to be safe and I'm going to be aggressive. Mm -hmm. It's like the standard thing people say about poker. What's the, the strongest way to play poker? I don't Do you play know this? You don't play poker. Okay. <laughs> it's I play some, but... Nothing. Solid aggression. That's that's that that's all we want in StarCraft. I'll, okay. I won't use poker references anymore. Now that now that I know that you are not, you don't play poker. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please okay. forgive me. I need I need the Eve references or uh, what other stuff do you play? I need to watch that interview again. <laughs> <laughs> We're just plain old StarCraft references. Anyways, the idea being. Whenever you invest in your army, it is this wonderful double-edged sword. So do realize that. Do realize that. Investing in army is always a good thing. And early game, investing in technology is the most fickle thing you can do. I'm not saying don't do it, but I'm saying it is, as far as the three paths, the riskiest. The most, in, in a lot of ways, it has the most reward. But in a lot of ways, it is the riskiest. It's like the classic example of I'm going to rush Banshee harass and I'm going to try to do damage. But if I don't do damage, well, shucks, the guy got his command center two minutes before me. So I'm in a lot of trouble. Mm. So whenever I talk to Zavel, whenever I talk to you, I'm going to be saying early game, economy, Army, economy, army. Stop getting so much gas. Zabel used to get double gas before expand. And I was like, stop. Oh, no. Stop building so much gas. <laughs> you don't need all this gas. This gas is killing you. <laughs> gas is like this poison that needs to be contained. Like you just, just build Marines. Marines are like hey. the best dude in the game. You can just um, build them. <laughs> Guess just, what? What? Invest being gas is a poisonous gas that is, that is contained. <laughs> well said. <laughs> Just say Do you see these SCVs like walking around carrying the gas? No. No. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. Mm. All you newbie players out there, stop getting gas. Just build units. Well, I guess Protoss kind of need gas, but they can't even build <laughs> stalkers without gas. <laughs> they they kind of suck. Protoss is like definitely the worst race, but pff, any Protoss, Terran, are glad to have you. We're glad to have you. So, for this next week, when we talk about Terran vs. Zurich and how you're going to be developing this game plan, definitely look at it like that. So, when we talk about Hellions, Hellions are this great unit that are so effective against Lings that they're like this really solid army composition for mm -hmm. when your opponent's building Lings. So, they're one of these things that are very good on the harass side of the game and are very mobile and are really cheap and easy to produce and the only gas you need is for the factory. So yeah. um, it's one of these things where you can do things like be aggressive with them and yet be so stable because you have the ability to deal with lings. Mm -hmm. So next week, I'm going to be excited. We'll talk about your Terran vs. Zerg. I'll ask you about it first thing, and you'll you'll explain all this work you've done and be like, yes, I developed this wonderful Hellions, and I build Hellions, and then I build a bunch of other units because I love building army, and then I attack, and then I, like, win. 
Or if I don't win, I kill their third, and then I build my own third. Okay? You got it? You got it? It's in the bank? Completely. Absolutely. Good. Good. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. This is the Armory. This is week three with Glitched. I am Archaic for Archaic Coaching on YouTube and Twitter. And obviously, if you haven't checked out Glitched live stream yet... You probably should. I don't know. Have you been streaming recently at all, Glitched? Um, I have been a little bit. I'm usually streaming late night on Saturdays. There you go, guys. Or a late night Friday night Saturdays. There's his uh, his link, Twitch TV slash Glitched with a 7. Obviously, check out all the old episodes if you haven't watched them. And also stay tuned for a special announcement um, coming up next week. I'm going to be doing some new stuff. You're joining may, Evil Geniuses? That may involve live streaming. No, not uh, not Evil Geniuses. Live streaming. <laughs> and um, the other hint I've given is it has, if you've liked the WCG content that I did, and I know a lot of you did love it, um, more is coming okay. in the future. So stay tuned. Um, follow me on Twitter because that's where it's going to drop. Uh, and that'll be happening next week. And the last thing I have to say is this week, me and Zavel are not doing an episode. So I'm sorry for all you faithful followers. Zavel's actually out of town. So instead, I'm going to be releasing something a little special. And I won't spoil it for you guys. So stay tuned for the Saturday release date. Instead of Zavel episode, I'm going to be doing something a little special. Thanks, everybody, for watching. This has been week three with Glitched. Peace, bro.